we're food for thought, so our idea is kind of an educational workshop for your kids telling the story of food. So it's like a biography from the origins right up, up to the end, so when it's wasted or when it's consumed. They're the two options, I suppose. Uh, so we sort of called it a food memoir, uh, from the cradle to the grave, and like our part in its uh, demise, I suppose, it's our food waste. Uh, so uh, there we go, yeah. So yeah, so we designed a, an educational workshop, really, uh, for 15 to 17 year olds, a scout group based out in Bray. Sort of got them to engage in the problem because we didn't want to just lecture them. It's, wouldn't be that interesting, so yeah, so they're sort of 17 year olds going to university next year, they're going to start to cook for themselves when they move out, so sort of that's the kind of age you're targeting, kids don't cook, so there wouldn't be any point in uh, lecturing them, I suppose. So yeah, we really wanted to educate them about food waste and the food system in general. So there's some stats, like 30% of our food is wasted. It's 1.3 billion tons of organic food waste that you can, so edible food waste a year. It's 1.8 billion tons altogether a year, so it's a pretty large number of it. Uh, so it costs the Irish household 400 to 1,000 euro per year. So I mean, that's in binning it, black bins, brown bins, and also the cost of the food itself. Jason, Jason's gonna take over now. Yeah. So hi, um, so we thought a good solution would be to develop, to, to develop a workshop for these youths on the food waste. So um, we used Brona's scout group in Bray, um, so we communicated them on several uh, levels on what they would like from the workshop. Um, and the goal would be just to improve their understanding of the food wastage and what they're eating and where it comes from. Um, success for us would be to get feedback, um, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, just so we could go forward with the project and hope to implement it into different um, settings, which I'll speak about in a minute. So yeah, so we did some preliminary research and we went to Eco UNESCO. So it's a really great centre, and we spoke to a man called Phelan. Um, he gave us some great tips on running workshops and what was successful and unsuccessful for him. And with that on board, we went to the the group and we decided because we used uh, user centred design. So we just asked them what would they like from the workshop and what would work for them. Um, so this was a really important. Um, uh, background to our project just using the user centered design. So in the longer term we hope that the science gallery might take this on and use it for their TY projects and um, because it is something that Irish youths aren't actually educated on in second level so um, and it really needs to be brought in and also it's a great time because we have the junior certificate reform now coming up so we hope to open dialogue with Minister Jan O'Sullivan on implementing this into um, maybe the CSP module and um, we're not sure if that will work but it certainly would be great and we'd really like that and of course adults are the ones who usually do the cooking so so um, community workshops all over the country would also be ideal for this kind of thing. So um, just uh, that's the long term goal. So um, this workshop was done as a trial and Brona will now tell you what was done at the workshop. So what we, what we did when we actually went to the workshop was we sat down and we asked each individual kid to tell us about what they'd eaten already that day. And we took one item of what they'd eaten that day and gave them their location of where that food actually came from. So they kind of were really shocked by many of the answers that we gave them. So they'd be like, oh, I had bananas. And we'd ask them, do you, do you know where this came from? Because they're not going to read the packaging. And they're like, mm, Tesco, you know? Um, so like, you know, bananas coming from Brazil. Uh, they were shocked by the fact that potatoes, a lot of potatoes are coming from Egypt. I mean, Ireland is so renowned for potatoes, but we can't grow them all year round. Um, honey from, uh, from Mexico, uh, Nutella comes from Italy you know they just don't have these things that they think about so what we did then was they actually drew out a map of the world it's not very accurate but you know they're not all artists and the world is a pretty difficult thing to draw but it got them actively thinking about it doing something being creative and then each one of them drew their own individual food item that they'd been given onto the map where it was found including the mileage that we gave them so once they did that you saw the map up on the wall at our poster session, they did the arrows, and they also came up with the collective mileage for one item per kid in the group, all added up to over 64,000 kilometers for one item per kid that one day. 
And then we realized that also teenagers don't exactly know how long a kilometer they drive. You know, they have no idea how far that distance is. So we compared it to the 40,000 kilometers that's the circumference of the Earth. And that made them go, whoa, <laughs> that's a lot. All from just one food item. So you can see here them actually actively doing their workshop, actually drawing, getting kind of active. We did realize a couple of things that if we were to bring this to another thing, we would change slightly. Possibly don't give teenagers markers in a relaxed environment. They will draw on each other. Um, and also maybe to give them all an individual card that they can draw their piece of food onto at the same time, rather than only having two people drawing at the time on the map. And then they could stick it onto the map, just to get everybody actively busy at the same time. So it was really good to run the pilot workshop to find out what worked, what was a little awkward, what wasn't fun. So what we also in incorporated into it was the Makey Makey. Now we wanted to show them that even though there is going to be food wastage, that there's pretty much no bounds to what you can do with that. So trying to get them to think a little bit about recycling. So they were pretty shocked that you could actually hook up a banana and a carrot to a computer and play music on it. So they were really, really enjoying that, and that was really fun. We did this at the end because we realized it was distracting. It's fun and creative, and we actually told them they were going to be doing this kind of as a bribe. We said, look, we're going to be teaching you. It's a Friday night. I know you want to have fun, but at the end, we'll show you something really fun to engage with if you bear with us. And that really, really worked. They had something to look forward to. So now I'll pass you on to Gabriella, and she'll tell you a little bit about what the feedback was from the kids. Yeah. So after the workshop, we recorded some interviews with the participants to receive some feedback. Um, and here's a small sample of these interviews. No, it's not working. How I can I turn on the interview? There's a video there, yeah. No? Oh, got somebody helping us. No idea? Back. No? <laughs> what have you learned today? Um, I learned a lot of things I didn't know before. Um, for example, one of the most interesting things was that 30% uh, of our food goes, to, uh, goes in the bin of our food at home. So it's definitely been like an eye-opening experience, I'd say. And uh, I'll definitely go away from this, you know, great. being and more conscious. Was it interesting for you? Yeah, yeah, it definitely yeah. was. Um, you like the, the map thing? The map, yeah, the map was really cool. It, and like, yeah. seeing how, uh, you know, the circumference of the Earth is 40,000 kilometers, yeah. but each item, an item for everyone today, added up to 60,000, I think, so yeah. that was definitely... Yeah. And you think that so somehow it can change something in our daily life? Um, yeah, like yeah. if everyone does a little bit, I guess it'll, it'll change overall. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely start myself, you know, in my own life doing more to preserve yeah, food. Great, and great, that's great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> okay, what did you learn today? Uh, I learned that most of Ireland's potatoes aren't grown in Ireland, they're from Egypt, and that hazelnuts are from Turkey. So, did you enjoy today? Yeah, I really enjoyed it, it was so much fun. What was the most interesting fact you learned today? Uh, I learned that bananas come from Brazil, 8,000 kilometres away, I think, yeah. Will you ever waste food again? No, <laughs> hopefully I won't. Don't. <laughs> 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 so, fr from this first trial, we also realized some points that could be somehow improved in the next step. It would be like um, develop more diverse activities during the workshop, and also te teaching the kids of how to compost, compost and how to recycle, recycling food. And also, like, um, give uh, each participant um, his own map, so he can maybe draw the whole food of the, the week in the map, like his own map. Um, but even so, this seems um, quite a promising approach to reach our, our main goal of uh, improving the knowledge about food system of food, food waste at all. That's it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.